Welcome in everybody to this week's edition of Valpo Football Weekly. It's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. Brandon Vickery with you. Glad to be joined via Zoom by the head coach of the three and one Valpo football team, Landon Fox. And uh, coach, let's talk about Saturday's game at Drake. And I think people saw the videos of your excitement that circulated on social media after the game to win at Drake for the first time in program history, to beat Drake for the first time since 2003. Just what was that like? What did it mean to the program? Yeah, that, I mean, that's where the excitement came from. I was just so happy for the, the, the program and the guys on this football team um, that created that opportunity for themselves through a lot of hard work and preparation. But that's where the excitement comes from uh, for those guys. Just um, they've done an outstanding job in terms of their preparation um, and the, the opportunity to go to Drake and, and, and get a big win. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a place where obviously they have done a really good job. It's a good program. Uh, but to go there and, and get a win, um, it's something we emphasize. We talked about it. It was 6,480 some days. I can't remember exactly, but we talked about that. That was something that was um, talked about within our program. And so we took a lot of pride and, hey, let's go out there and give it our best effort and try to create an opportunity to, to get a victory. And that's what we did. And it all started on the defensive side of the ball. It tied the, the record for the fewest points allowed in a road PFL game by Valpo uh, in the history of the PFL. And the first time since 1998, they held the team to seven or fewer in a PFL road game. I guess, what'd you see on the defensive side and what led to so much success defensively on Saturday? Well, and, and Brandon, I, I don't mean to, to, to you know, to, to sound arrogant with this statement, but at the same time, our guys knew and they were confident they, they understood the scheme. Like, uh, we, we could have easily walked away with this, you know, a, a shutout on the board. And um, it's just being consistent every single play. And, and they know that. And they, they saw it on film um, this morning. And, you know, that's where we got to get to is to say, hey, this is, the, this is our potential. This is where we can be. This is how good we can be. And to play at that level. And um, sure, you know, I, I thought the guys understood how they, they knew how Drake was going to attack us. And so they put themselves in position and did a really nice job. But uh, there's a few plays in there where we didn't, and it created, a, you know, an opportunity for them to score and, and made the game interesting when, you know, we get up 10-0 in, in a situation where, hey, you know, if they have to drive the ball, use the clock, you're feeling pretty good, and we give up a big score. And, um, yeah, I give credit to our guys to understanding, you know, again, being in the right spots, but we, we can even play a cleaner game than we did. Let's talk about Austin Martins. He's had an interesting journey. I think he started out as a Division three running back, then switched to defense at the junior college level. What made you want to bring him into your program, and what did you see from him uh, on Saturday when he had the two and a half sacks, including a huge one late in the game? Yeah, Austin, one of those guys that just plays so hard. You, you saw that on film um, from, the, you know, from, like you said, his running back days. He still tries to convince us all the time that he, you know, he wants to play a running back, but um, we have a pretty good running back, a couple of them in that group. So I told him they might want to stay at defensive end, but um, he's done, he's just played so hard. Um, you know, he's obviously a little undersized for that position maybe, um, but what he makes, you know, makes up for is just his effort, his heart, his want to. Uh, again, he's one of those guys who understood the scheme and, and he got in some positions where he had some edge rush opportunities and knew what was coming. And, and when the play came, he made it. And we, we talk about that all the time. We always say, hey, the play doesn't care who makes it. It's just when it comes, you have to be able to make the play. And he did that. The kicking game was important for you on Saturday. Ben Neisner named the Coast Special Teams Player of the Week in the Pioneer Football League for what he was able to do in the field position battle. And then also Brian Bartholomew uh, making from 49 yards and the field goal was the difference in the game. Uh, just how important was the kicking game? What did you see from, from those guys on Saturday? Yeah, I, I would say that's the difference in the game. You know, the kicking game was huge and hit hidden yardage. We won the hidden yards, bat, hidden yards battle. And w when we've won this year, we've won that hidden yardage battle in the, in the three games that we've won. And so um, Ben was a huge factor in that. Um, he almost averaged nearly 50 yards a punt. It's 47.6, uh, but did an outstanding job in the punt game. And then, you know, with Brian, it, it's one of those things in practice, we'll push him back to 60. And I think you and I talk about this. Is he consistent from that distance? No, you know, not all the time, but he, he has that ability. And so um, when he went out there, I was confident he was going to make it. And uh, we got to be better in protection because he got some things at his feet. But and so that even makes it uh, even a little bit more to his credit. We got some, they got a little pressure on us and still was able to knock it in from 49. And 
yeah, I think that was a huge lift to our team um, to put, you know, get those points on the board. You talked about the hidden yardage battle. The other battle that you've been successful in in your wins is the turnover battle. You are the only team in the nation that has played more than three games and hasn't lost a fumble all year. In the, the only game where you've turned the ball over was the one game you lost. Just how important has the turnover battle, forcing turnovers and not committing turnovers on the offensive side been for your team this season? Yeah, so, so Brandon, good question because we, we, we have what we call a plan to win. And the number one plan to win, are, it mirrors offense and defense. We don't do goals. We just plan to win. So everybody on the team understands that number one goal is really the ball. The ball is the issue. You know, the ability to, to take care of it and then take it away on defense. And then what we do, Brandon, as well, in practice, we call them 3,600 drills. And that 3,600 is kind of a mantra of our program, your time, being your wealth. You know, you got to be, you know, you got to be committed, not just interested, but we use that 3,600 for that 3,600 drill because we want them to know how important it is. And that drill is, is turnovers. It's ball security drill. And so if you came out to practice, it's one of the first drills you're going to see every day after stretch, after stretch, boom, we're right into that ball security, both offensively and defensively taking it away. Um, and so that we, we want the guys to understand that that ball is the issue. Now you have a chance to clinch your best winning percentage since 2003 with the game on Saturday at Moorhead State. Uh, let's talk about keys to that game. It's a Moorhead State team that's put up some points and they've won two of their last three games. What do you expect from Saturday's matchup? Yeah, Moor Moorhead State is, is going to be, I think, the best team that we've played so far. They're very, very talented, have a lot of skill, both offensively and defensively. Um, and they're, they're old. They, I mean, they have a lot of upperclassmen uh, on their football team. And then they added a few transfer pieces as well, um, that I'm sure you'll talk about um, throughout the game. Um, so they'll put a lot of pressure on you offensively. They're up tempo, um, and you know they're gonna they're, they're gonna create problems through their speed in which they run snaps. And you know we've only been playing defensively 55, 65 snaps a game. And th I mean this week, you know we're gonna be logging 75, 80 snaps. So we're gonna get a lot of pressure on us defensively. So we're gonna have to depend on our offense to make sure they're taking care of the ball, moving the chains, keeping keeping their offense off the, off the field and be, be really good in the kicking game again. There is the head coach of the Valpo football program, Landon Fox, once again, uh, it's noon Eastern, 11 Central for the start on Saturday at Moorhead State. The game will be on ESPN Plus. As always, you can follow us on social media or for all the latest in Valpo Athletics, check out valpoathletics.com. We'll talk to you again next week. This is Valpo Football Weekly, and it's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone & Joint Institute.